required to do something about encouraging private sector job creation. What would you do? Very true. It's, it's very easy to talk about jobs or talk about creating jobs. And we know that the job creation happens in this sector, in the private business world. And when you guys see an opportunity for profit or to grow or to support your community or your family, you're going to do it. As, as a legislator, we need to be wise stewards of what we have so we don't come back and ask for more from you and put more burdens on you. So what we do as legislators to help you is get out of your way. Lower the burdens, reform the B&O so it's actually fair. We have the, one of the most unfair B&O tax systems in the nation where we, where we actually tax you on the gross versus the net. It should be on the net. Where we, where we provide uh, an opportunity to, to buy private workers' comp that will be cheaper for the employer, cheaper for the employee as well. Where you, then it gives you the opportunity to say, okay, I can actually hire somebody and it makes sense now um, versus put more burdens on you. That's how we start. Okay, creating jobs. Businesses create jobs. You can't just put a name on something, put a name on a bill and say it's going to create jobs. Thurston County Superior Court just ruled that Olivia wanted to put on, I believe it was referendum 52 or 58, one of those numbers, that it was going to create jobs. So then when people read the ballot, oh, it creates jobs, let's vote for it. The judge rightfully ruled there is nothing in this that is creating jobs and should not be labeled. Although, down in Olympia, that's what we do. We put nice sounding labels on a lot of bills and then we don't create anything. There are some businesses that are thriving right now in the state of Washington. In Snohomish County, Pierce County, and here in Kitsap County. And all of those businesses are tribal owned. They're building, they're expanding, and they're hiring. And why are they doing that? Because they do not have to live by the same onerous business regulations that our private sector does. If we reduced the private sector's business regulations to that of the tribes, the private sector would flourish also. Uh, thank you. Sarah? There's a lot that we need to do. I wish I had uh, one hour rather than one minute. Um, you know, part of it is changes to our tax climate. It's why I worked with the NFIB and with the AWB to pass some changes to our uh, to our tax situation, passing a constitutional amendment to limit personal property taxes, which are a tax on a business's assets. Um, we need to look at regulatory relief, and it's why I passed a law that um, provides some relief from paperwork violations so that businesses don't get nickel and dime to death. And I actually worked with the Port Orchard Chamber uh, on getting that bill passed. Um, I really think infrastructure matters. You know, in Gig Harbor, where Marty and I live, we've had two building moratoria over the last five years. And so making smart investments in roads and sewers so that development projects aren't stuck in park is, a, is an important way that we can grow jobs. And finally, we need to invest in workforce, making sure that people have the skills that they need to take on the jobs that are open today and the jobs that will be open down the road. Thank you. Starting with Chris, uh, this is a follow-up question basically to the same issue regarding business. Our economy is <coughs> continually changing, and one of the ways we get workers back to work is through retraining unemployed workers. To what degree do you think this should be a priority? Priority for whom? The state or the individual? Because everybody uh, has their own personal issues on whether or not, you know, you lose your job, what are you going to do? You're going to go in another direction, you're going to go back to school and, and try, find a new career. Is this something that the state should be encouraging? Unfortunately, the state is involved in this, and sometimes they do it wrong. We've got a lot of people at, at Olympic College where now they're going for computer programming. These people are 40, 50 years old. Do they actually think when they get into the workforce, recently graduating with programming that they're going to be competing against 20 year olds who have been living computer programming their entire lives. Um, we're putting together programs that uh, came out of Olympia for our veterans to come back and we would pay for them to go to school if they had green jobs. Green jobs? We, we need to find out what's going to be needed in our economy. Then we need to train our people for that. But again, I also think that this is more of a personal thing rather than a government issue. Um, 
I think it's a very important uh, function for our community and technical colleges. When someone has lost their job, oftentimes they need to get retooled so they can get back into the workforce. If they simply stay on unemployment, it costs all of us more money. So, you know, part of the function of our community colleges is to help folks upskill. Now, I think it would be a mistake if we were upskilling people for jobs that don't exist, and that's why I actually work to change the law so that our retraining dollars are actually focused on high demand fields, fields that employers are actually looking for people. Um, that is a smart way to protect taxpayers rather than having people sit for a long period of time on unemployment, and it's very important for our employers. Even in this economic climate, our state's workforce board reports that nearly a majority of our state's employers have a challenging time finding the skilled workers that they need. That is a challenge to all of us, and worker retraining is one of the ways we can solve that problem. Marty? Yeah. Um, I think it depends on what the job is. If it's a job or industry that's gone obsolete, coal mining or in, in Washington State, okay, I'm all for it. We need to retrain those people, get them back in the productive work, workforce. If they're in an industry that's vital here, but because of the economy or because of what the state government's done with regulation and taxation to go out of business, that's still needed here, then we don't need to retrain them. We need to assimilate the business so they can get rehired to the industry that they're already trained in, where they're already valued in. There are many industries here locally that are vital. There are a lot of people that are trained here at the shipyard that you know, are, are, have vital skills that don't need retraining, they just need a job. So, limited things. Right, thank you. Now this is more of a, somewhat of a personal question and you probably rephrase it as a uh, 